All right, are we living? It says meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Meeting, that's using the word extraordinarily, uh, what's the word? <laughs> extraordinarily liberally, isn't it? Um, calling this a meeting when I'm sitting here flano uh, in, a, in a flano. Um, I just unshave and click to go live. Because uh, what happened over the last couple of times we've done this, is that saying I'm live? There it is. It is. There it is. Just so I want to be able to see your guys' comments. Um, so I bring up, a, whenever I'm looking over there, I bring up uh, this stream so I can see you and hear you and all of that. There you go. So there you go. Now I can see your comments. So whenever I'm looking over there, that means I'm looking at your uh, comments. So um, yeah, I uh, last couple of times I did this, I'd um, late at night. So it's way early tonight. Like last couple of times, a bit of midnight and um, 10 o'clock and, and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's been um, yeah, nine, nine o'clock on a Saturday night. Is it Saturday? I think it is. Yeah, Saturday. How old are we getting that you're sitting there watching Facebook? I'm sitting here at my house on Facebook. And what did we used to do 20 years ago on a Saturday night at nine o'clock? <laughs> Jesus, how old are we getting? So uh, there's Brian Wells. G'day, Brian. How are you, man? Uh, a bunch of you guys have jumped on. Hello. Good to see you. Yeah, so it's weird. I, uh, I, I did this a couple of times. I did this once at, at, um, early in the week, a couple of days ago, at 11.25 or something, right? And went till midnight, thinking no one would be on. And it was chockers. And then I did it again the next night. So I'm going to do it every now and then. And um, I'm going to do it at night because it seems that's when you guys want to want to chat and want to hang and want to do stuff. So um what I do have to do in the future, which I haven't done tonight, clearly, is get a at least one little lesson in there, just so I'm adding some value, like, you know, kind of like the, the late show with Dave Letterman or something. At least he'd have some content prepared, even if he didn't jibber jabber on for a little bit. So I'm going to find some segments within the, you know, the late show. So I've actually got a bit of a plan instead of just start the thing, see who's on. And then, uh, and then talk about who's on. But let me talk about who is on. Amanda Rosarza, right? Working on a Saturday night because we're old. Yeah, this isn't working though. This is just talking crap. Uh, although I suppose I'm going to share a lesson right now. Whatever Massimo Rosarza, I don't, and I don't know who the magic ingredient here is, but I've been married before. Uh, I've known Massimo since he was a teenager. Um, and uh, he's now my age, 48, whatever. Um, and his wife, Amanda, is on here. And um, I don't know who the magic ingredient here is, but Amanda can tell me. I've been married before. Now, me and my first wife, we've, we're have we neutral in our relationship, meaning I haven't heard from her in a long, long time. She's moved on, married, kids, you know, happy life, wonderful. I don't think she has any animosity to me, and I still have nothing but affection for her, her family, uh, her siblings I still stay in touch with, uh, and, you know, on Facebook and things. Great, great family, great, great people, as is she. Um, but, it, you know, everything ends sort of not so nicely, even though it didn't end horribly. Um, but, you know, we haven't stayed in touch. Um, other partners, um, I've had three in my life other than Naomi, three, you know, I'm nearly 50 and I've had three long-term partnerships. And the other two, when they've ended, have not been pretty um, whatsoever. And meaning they can never hear this because they've blocked me on Facebook and, you know, they'll never see it and all that sort of thing. What I want to know from Amanda, because Mass ain't on, but Amanda's on. I have seen Amanda commenting on Massimo's ex-wife's post. I've seen, I've seen not only friendliness, but positivity. Like not only courtesy, but positivity between Massimo's ex-wife and Massimo's current wife. And I just want to know what the hell, who is the magic? Is Who is the nice human that manages that magic pill? It might be all three of them. I don't know. But I rarely have seen it. The only other person I've seen that in is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Dwayne Johnson and his ex-wife are still in business together. They're still friends. They're st it's amazing. So, um yeah, so credit to you guys. Um, absolute credit to you guys. Because I try. I really do try to be just awesome. I, I often have said to, to mates of mine, I wish I had me as an ex because I'm fantastic. <laughs> Clearly the exes would disagree. Or oh, you know what you know what it is? I know what it is. Maybe I'm just that damn desirable 
maybe I'm just that damn amazing as a partner that they just get so cranky when when it's no longer <laughs> God. and all the girls are going no Glenn that's not it that's not it oh my goodness all right so what do we got Rob Castro's on feels like I just got home from work we well, probably did Rob's in real estate so you probably did just get home from work what is it nine o'clock you probably did you should still be working man it's Saturday night you got negotiating to do where's all the offers from today to get put together all right so Colin uh, from Streetwise at Colin Street how you doing Cole good to see you my man out in uh, our neck of the woods out here on the north side here we go here's Amanda's comment it's because we are both rock stars lol that and I think you just must make the choice to not be jerks but what if one person makes the choice absolutely and others don't i think we're in trouble then uh that and you realize the first relationship didn't work but don't hate each other because of it yeah so i don't know clearly that isn't the way it worked out with uh with, with us so um but good on you guys credit credit to you guys um so uh a little lesson tonight let me let me um uh, check in with this um all right yeah, i've got to turn this sound off there you go um so have a look at this look at this I don't know if you can see this. There you go. See this gym beam? It is the size of my head, right? This bottle, look, that's my hand. Like you can see it's on a stand. It's so big. You can't sort of see because it's sort of green screen in that. But it's, look at it. It is a foot and a half high. It's four and a half liters. Um, and behind there, look at that. Look at that. That's that's my little son's play thing. He's messing around with a turntable. Um, but that liter and a four and a half liter gym beam, I've got a, just a massive shout out and thanks uh, and, and just total affection to... Alex and Felicity Harden, what those guys did, I went and did, see, isn't that amazing? And that shows if they treat their clients like they treat their service providers. I'm a, you know, look, I'm friendly. I'm a friend of theirs, right? But I've become a friend of theirs through my coaching business. You know, they are coaching clients of mine, but they become friends. I went and did uh, two half days in their business on Thursday and Friday or Wednesday and Thursday. Thursday and Friday, Wednesday and Thursday. I don't know. If they're on, you tell me. Someone will be able to tell me. Brain's a bit smashed. No, it was Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, it was Wednesday, Thursday. Because Friday, I drove to Coffs Harbour and picked up my kids. So I've got one watching YouTube in that room and one watching Pixel. Joel, you watching Pixels? Joel, you watching Pixels? Yeah. And uh, Joel's watching Pixels in the other in the Adam Sandler movie. Um, so that's what you can hear in the background. Hope it's not too distracting. Um, so yeah, it was Wednesday and Thursday. And there's uh, Kaz. Hey, Kaz, Kaz, Kaz Ween, how are you doing? Um, so, uh, so yeah, um, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm in their office. I'm there to serve them. And this is the interesting thing. I'm there to serve them. They're paying me for my, you know, ad, you know, coaching services, consultancy, whatever you want to call it, my marketing assistance. And they bring out for me, and first off, they, they, they take the piss, which blew my mind. Cause after two days of that, I'm really mentally kind of spent and it was supposed to be two half days. We went till, you know, late after, you know, I think it was four or five o'clock um, uh, when we finished up on the second day. And um, they brought our little Jim Beam and a nice handcrafted, beautiful and I knew expensive bourbon drinking glass, you know, as a thank you. And I'm like, guys, you don't owe me anything. I was really moved just by that gesture, a little Jim Beam bottle, kind of like you get on the airlines. I thought that was nice because it went with the nice glass, you know. And, but that was just the ruse present. And I was appreciative of that. I was blown away, in fact, because they don't owe me nothing. That paid me to be there, you know. And then they bring out that thing, that four and a half litre thing that is so much Jim Beam, it, it has to go on its own stand so it can do that with a, with a Jim Beam customised thing because you can't take it off the stand. Like, you can't pick it up. You've got to do that with it. And, 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 you know, you put the thing in the top so it pours out uh, or whatever. And, um, and so they buy me that as a thank you gift on top of the cash they paid. I'm like, if they teach, if they treat their, their, uh, their clients as well as they treat a service provider of theirs, then I'll get that out of the shot because it's green screens messing with it. But if they treat their service providers with the thoughtfulness, uh, sorry, if they treat their clients, people who pay them with the thoughtfulness that they treat someone they pay no wonder they're doing so amazingly in business. You know, there's that old Zig Ziglar saying that says, help enough people get what they want and you get everything you want. And, um, you know, these guys, Harden Property, Alex and Felicity Harden, uh, exude that. And look, so there's no wonder that, and they must do that for their people because 
they're the fastest growing real estate agency in Brisbane by a country mile. Um, you know, even with COVID in their first year of trade, they're doing better than virtually everyone in the city that I certainly that I know of. Um, and they're going to hit the seven figure mark make themselves a million dollar business, just them, just Alex, just Felicity. They've taken on their first staff member like Thursday um, when I met their first staff member on her first day, uh, Christina on, uh, you know, million dollars in turnover and they're more than halfway there and they're only uh, just over halfway through the calendar year and they're more than halfway to that million dollar mark in their first year despite COVID. So, you know, there's something to that. And so, uh, you know, there's the Zig Ziglar quote, help enough people get what they want, you know, look after enough people in whatever way, shape or form that might be in your business and you get everything you want, you know? So sure, if I want four and a half litre bottles of Jim Beam, then it seems that I'm helping enough people get what they want. And so I get everything uh, I want. Um, so there's uh, Matt Farthing's joy. Hey, Matt, are you there? You see this bad boy, four and a half litres, mate. Um, I think I'm going to need some help uh, polishing some off. And I know I'm very white tonight and I'm trying out a new ring light and I think it's too bright. So if I turn that off, yeah, see how I, I'm still white because i got another light over the back, but see how there's a shadow? I want to get rid of the shadow. I don't know how to do that. I don't know. I'm going to get some, I think I might have to get makeup because I look so, I look white. I look pasty white. Um, even, the, even the red flannel doesn't help. So uh, anyway. So no, it was very cool. It was very cool. A very good lesson uh, to be learned there. And um, yeah, so that was uh, that was my week. And I um, hope you guys were had a, had a good one. Um, so also lessons that you want to try different things. You know, this whole late show business. I do have to find some things to talk about because if you guys, you guys are being a bit shush tonight. And um, normal, the last couple of times, all I've done is I've just responded to what you guys were saying, and that's been the show. And it went for an hour each time. It was nuts. So you guys have been a bit sure. The only thing I'm, I'm talking about here tonight is um, <laughs> Amanda and Massimo and how they managed to maintain a wonderful rapport with Massimo's ex-wife. And, um, and that to me is uh, an, an amazing thing um, to be behold. Oh, that's it, Eric Thomas joined us. Oh my God. There is no way that E.T., Eric Thomas, E.T., the hip hop preacher has joined us. But Eric, if you have, if you're still on E.T., is there any chance I can send you a link and you can just jump on and we can chat? Man, if you're up, E, and you're on here, let's see, if you can, just send me a, oh, my phone is, I don't know where my phone is. You have to send me a message on here, E, if you can. Send me a message on Facebook and um, I'll send you the link and we can chat, man, if you're on. I don't know, he may not be. Um, Luke says we need another celeb. What do you mean? What do you mean? Like here tonight or just we need to do something? Well, we got to open up the borders first. Eric, the aforementioned Eric Thomas, we are waiting f to be able to bring in international celebrities because, uh, Eric, we were ready to do a tour June um, just after we, well, look, a week and a half ago, I was supposed to be at Arnold Schwarzenegger's house for a party. That got waylaid. And um, and then uh, then we we're going to do a tour with Eric uh, in, in, in the winter, you know, here. And so... Um, yeah, but we've got to, uh, so yeah, the answer is yes, we will, we will, we will, we will. Uh, but we've got to get the borders open first uh, before we can do anything, Luke. So, um, so Luke says, we need another celeb. No, photos. What do you mean photos? I know, I know. What do you mean photos? All right, Luke, you're going to you're gonna have to give me some more details, man. Because <laughs> just the word photos in, in your comment, uh, I, I could say, yes, photos, they're a, they're a, they're, they're a fascinating um, uh, feat of technology that we're able to capture a moment in time on photographic paper historically and put it, uh, expose it into in some dark light, dark rooms and create photographs. And nowadays we do so electronically. So yes, photo, photographs are amazing, <laughs> Luke. <laughs> um, I think he's saying uh, we need more photos with the celebs. I agree. So we got to do it, but it's... COVID's thrown a spanner in that works, man. You know, when we can only have, no, or up until recently, and I think in some states it's still the case, when we can only have uh, 20 people in the room, including me, Naomi, so that means we're down to 18 participants, then in order to get a decent celebrity to come, I'm going to have to charge you, Luke, eight grand a ticket. Because, <laughs> yeah, the only way, you had too much apple juice. I haven't touched one. I promise you, I haven't touched one. The, look, the bottle's still full. The bottle's still full. Look, see? The four and a half liters. I haven't touched it. Um, yeah, Amanda says Kevin Smith. I would love to have Kevin Smith. Um, 
But uh, yeah, can't be done at the moment because he's international. And um, although the timing's right for Kevin because he's uh, finished Jay and Silent Bob reboot, which I watched the other night, which is fantastic. If you haven't seen it, Amanda, I'm sure you have because you're a fan and as am I. But boy, oh boy, it's good. It is fan service to the nth degree. Have you seen it, Amanda? Jay and Silent Bob reboot. If you haven't, you got to see it. It's great. Um, all right. So uh, Michael Berlin. Hello, sir. Michael Berlin, a mate of mine from out Ipswich Way from back in the day. Michael Berlin, let me tell you, back in the day, the fastest human at Bundamba Primary School, that man was. The fastest human ever. He was lightning. I don't know what he ended up doing the, the 100 metres in, but I reckon he'd be pushing 10 seconds, that son of a gun. He was lightning, Michael Berlin was. So there's Alex Harden. Alex, I've been talking about you. Did someone tell you? Did someone text you? Alex Harden's just joined us. Um all right, I will get on to Alex in a minute. So, oh, Ronnie is saying good morning. Good morning, sir, but it is evening here. It is uh, towards the end of our Saturday night here. Well, it's 9 p.m. It's actually, for us old buggers, it's, it's early. For the young pups, they're about to start to go out drinking. But remember that? Remember when you used to go out at about 9 o'clock, leave? You know, you'd drink at home until 9, then go out. Remember those days? Um, so Amanda says, I haven't. It's been in my P.O. box waiting for me. Ah, cool. Well, go get it now and go watch it because it's great. That uh, Amanda is referring to, she has in her P.O. box, Kevin uh, Smith's movie, Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. And he survived his heart attack in order to make that movie. And I'm so glad he did. It is Kevin Smith fan service to the nth degree. It's fantastic. So check it out. Go to the P.O. box now, Amanda. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Um, so Alex Harden's just joined us. Um, and uh, Alex, I'm not going to tell the story again, but Alex Harden, who has just joined us, is the man that I was referring to about this story. So, Alex, you can imagine the story I was telling about your giant, bigger than my head, 4.5 litre bottle of Jim Beam, James B. Beam. So there you go. Hey, did you speak of Jim Beam? Did you hear, as part of the, you know, the whole race insanity, well, it's a bit of trivia, maybe some positivity came out of that. I did not know that someone else taught Jack Daniels how to make his Tennessee whiskey, and um, now we know it, so it's wonderful. And credit now, I've got to learn that name, so I know that trivia. I'm unfamiliar with it. You know, I've got 48 years of people drumming into my head that Jack Daniels is the name, um, and yeah, it seems that he was taught how to make uh, his bourbon not out of his own creation, but by a, uh, I believe, an African American fellow. So there you go, a little bit of trivia, um, and uh, uh, yeah, so that's um. So that's some some bourbon trivia. Oh, listen to that. Can you hear that in the background? There's um, working for the weekend. Is that Eddie Money? They're a little trivia. Who's working for the weekend? Is that Eddie Money? Can someone confirm? Um, all right, Michael Berlin says, 100 meter brother, you're a legend, bro. No, mate, Michael, I want to know how fast you got it. How fast did you get the 100, man, back in the day? At your fastest, what, what was it? Um, and Felicity says he doesn't go to the shops. Yeah, no, Felicity got this, actually. So as I said before, no, Felicity, um, now Felicity Harden's on as well. I did give full credit before that it was the two of you who blew my mind the other day. You can go back to the start of the video when I'm done and watch me just rant about how amazing you are. So there you go. <laughs> um, all right, and Alex says, enjoy your placebo. Yeah, one time it was at an event. I can't even remember the context with which I... I called the bourbon I was drinking a placebo and I have no idea why, but I was drinking a bourbon while I was training. And, um, and for some reason I said it was a placebo. And so Alex remembered and he bought me a 4.5 litre bottle of placebo. So it's pretty cool. Um, all right. So there you go. Michael Berlin's fastest hundred metres was 12.09 seconds. So there you go. I don't know uh, at what vintage that was. All I remember is back at primary school, Michael Berlin was lightning. Him and Aaron Jeffett. Aaron Jeffett was pretty fast, if I remember correctly, Mick, wasn't he? Um, but I was always in the B and C division. I was never in A division with those pair. They were lightning, those pair. Um, the last late show I watched, Letterman sculled his bottle of Jim Beam. James, I shall not be <laughs> sculling that bottle of... Imagine just sculling 4.5 litres. You'd die. You would, you'd have to die. Yeah, you'd have to die. I don't think you could survive. I don't think you could survive. Um, and Felicity said, you're amazing. Oh, Felicity, you're the amazing one. Hey, thank you. 
I don't, I don't want to mention that it's why you are because I've been getting that wrong lately. I used to always judge people who'd get the wrong your, 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 or they're, they're, they're. I used to always think, how can you get that wrong? The brain's going, I've been getting it wrong lately. I've been getting it wrong. And I used to be the stickler for that. I know I can't spell when I type my emails and stuff, but the they're, 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 and the your, 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 I used to be the one that in my head, I'd never say anything, but in my head, I'd always go, oh, how can you get that wrong? It's the brain. I've been getting it wrong. Brain's going, hey, skull the mini one. <laughs> yeah, it's out there. It's out there too. I, I'm, I'm, I could skull that, but I'm, I'm not going out there just to get that. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so no, there you go. Uh, don't skull that bottle of JB, at least not the big one. Felicity says yes. Um, that's good. I'm glad. See, Felicity's looking out for me. Not like you, James. James wants me to skull four and a half litres of bourbon. Felicity's looking at me. Felicity's saying, no, no, I need him to stay at least a year till I get the business up and running. At least keep him around that long. Then, <laughs> then let him. Hey, uh, Michael Berlin suggests, um, yeah, mate, Aaron was even a bit faster than me at times. Wow. I was around 15 years old, mate. You're looking great. Oh, uh, no, I'm not, dude. I'm, I've put on the COVID 20. Dude, I've put on like 18 kilos since freaking the start of COVID, man. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. So um, I'm on it again. Um, you know, I'm walking. I'm, you know, got some weights and shit, and I'm doing everything I did to lose the weight in the first place. But man, I'm COVID. I'm, no, I can't blame COVID. I did it. You know, just since coincidentally, it wasn't causality, but it was at the same time. What do they call that? Correlation or something. Um, yeah, during the time since the start of the year, we've had COVID. And we've had Glenn eating shit and. And I'll put on kilo a week. And next thing you know, 18 weeks later, you're 18 kilos heavier. So no good. So um, it's called a shit. Yes, it is, Felicity. It's called a shit. <laughs> is that what I got to do to lose weight? Oh, a shot. <laughs> She's got shot with a star next to it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> you funny thing. All right. <laughs> Um, just live off JV and lose the COVID-20. Yeah, I tell you. Now, what they reckon you can live off... Um, I think someone's saying you live off, um, you can't live off Jim Beam, but uh, Guinness. I think someone was saying Guinness has enough nutrients in it to keep you alive. Um, I don't think you'd be too healthy, but you can, you can live on it, they reckon. So, um, yeah, I'll tell you though, you know, maybe if you did a shot of JB at the start of every day, now you get the munchies. You couldn't do it. You'd want to eat. You know, you'd lose all your inhibitions. You'd just go get a burger and, yeah, you know, you couldn't do it. It's a bad move, Alex. I'm trying to justify it in my head. Can't be done, my man. Um, do a shit <laughs> might help you lose a little. Yeah, I'll I'll do that. I'll do the um. What do you call it? The what do they call those things where you get the hose up the bot bot colonic or whatever they call them. Um, yeah, so that uh, that might do it. All right. I'm, next time I do one of these, I'm going to have actually an agenda and have a lesson or something to teach, so that we um we can actually justify bothering and instead of just shooting the shit and talking a little bit. But uh, today the lesson was this help enough people get what you want. <laughs> no, that's not it. It's help enough people get what they want and you get everything you want. And the example that we used today was I helped uh, Alex and Felicity, but here's the, the interesting thing. I, even though I helped them get what they want and they paid for it, you know, in the hands of the right balance of, whatever it is, whatever the magic there was that I did for them, where they felt that they'd paid me, wasn't they paid me in nickel and dimes either. And they thought that they wanted to gift, you know, give me something nice as well. If that is just something that's in their head that now see in my head, the law of reciprocation is far in their favor. I owe them, you know, even though I'm, I'm employed by them, I'm engaged by them. Like in my head, if they ever asked me for anything, you know, it's that principle of psychological indebtedness. Well, you know, they got me something so unexpected, so over the top amazing, and they know I like it. But of course, you know, now I own one. So, you know, next time there's a chance for me to pay back that goodwill, I'll be doing so because our brains like us to weigh up. We don't like feeling indebted to someone, even if it's in a positive way. You know what I mean? And so here, we're gonna, I'm going to one-up them by doing something nice for them at some stage. And, you know, it's a great relation. I tell you, what a great way to do business. Think about that. We're always trying to do more for each other, both from a client and a consultant perspective, to the point where we're, we're always sitting there going, I do, I'm now looking for a way to do more for my clients. And then they, you know, it's a beautiful thing. As I said, behind that wall right there, 
that's actually a green screen. But behind right there is a Harley Davidson that my clients bought for me um, in the same manner. It's just insane, you know? So there's the Zig Ziglar quote to end them all. Help enough people get what they want and you get everything you want. And that's not just real estate agents. I know there's a lot of real estate agents in here, but, um, uh, and what, now Felicity said, have you tried drinking out of the glass? Actually, Felicity, the glass, let me show you. The glass is up in those bookshelves up there, along with a watch that I was gifted by Arnold Schwarzenegger um, that I got at his house. He gave, uh, there were some prizes at a poker game. So he, um, there's a watch from Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's a autographed uh, helmet from the NFL that one of my USA clients who came out to Australia brought me. Like some of my, my there's an Eric Thomas limited edition album up there. Um, some of my most prized possessions are up in that bookshelf and um, your glass is in that. So I know you want me to have drunk out of it and I will, but at the moment I put it prior to place. It's like in the castle. This is going straight to the pool room. That's where it went. So that's where it is. Um, you could do 25% of Jim Beam. That's only a liter. Yeah, I don't know, mate. Um, implement 20% of Glenn's stuff. Um he has. No, Felicity, Luke has implemented at least 20% of my stuff and he's doing great. Yeah, he's doing great. I'm loving it. He's a bit of a breeder though. Hey, he is a bit of a breeder. Um, he's He just finished having one kid and literally, I reckon the day he brought his wife home from the hospital, he knocked her up again. <laughs> I'm sure of it. I need to do the maths on the timeline of Luke Walker's bloody um, uh, birth and reverse it back to when his last, but I reckon they're days. I reckon, I reckon minutes after they got home, Luke, uh, Luke and his, uh, and his wife uh, started the next one. So uh, there you go. Oh my God. A gift from the U S is a uh, gift from us is next to a gift from Arnold. There's my son. Come on out. Come and say hello, Joel. No, he's not going to, he's a bit shy. Uh, but yes, a gift from you is next to a gift from Arnold. Absolutely. It is. Um, You've always been a good lad, Glenn. You deserve all you get, buddy. Thanks, Michael. Um, although you couldn't tell it when we were 10. Hey, no one knew how any of us were going to turn out when we were 10, man. Hey. Um, but although I did catch up with Aaron and a few of the guys. Uh, Mick, it was, um, yeah, it was good. They're, they're all doing good. Mark Taylor, Aaron, uh, Eddie, you know, a couple of the lads. It's good. Mass Focus, Luke, not on your wife. Yeah, he does focus on his wife. Um, Matt S has five. I think Matt Steinway has six. Um, yeah, so you, Luke's got one to go. <laughs> yeah, cool, mate. All right, I'm going to do a runner. Done. I'm going to go chase my son. He, he was over there going big, big grin he is. So um, this was his this was his last uh, effort that he made. So I'm selling this turntable because I didn't know that it was actually worth money. And um, so that's a turntable there. And he uh, he went and put some Simpsons things and made a little diorama on this. That's pretty cool. There he is. Oh, oh no, he missed him. <laughs> um, yeah, so isn't that cool? That's my little son's uh, handiwork there. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's all good fun. All right. I so want to turn this around, but if I do, he'll, he's just over there. But if I turn it around, he'll run because he's a, He's a shy little one. He's my shy little infant. Oh, now he's got his big, um, he's got a big uh, doona covering himself up. So on, he's on defense. He's on camera defense. All right, gang, I'm going to take off. Good to chat. Good to see you guys. Um, I will have, uh, it's Jason McNamara. What's he saying? Oh, he's not on this live. He's just uh, probably commenting on one of his listings. He's, he's selling my old neighbor's house uh, out there at Ipswich at um, uh, 4 Lindsay Street, Bundamba. And I tell you, so there you go for your investors. If you if you want a bargain of an investment, one hundred sixty nine thousand um, dollars for a house and land in Bundamba, out at Ipswich, unbelievable, unbelievable. So yeah, uh, Chase McMurray, good luck with that one, mate. Um, all right, I'm gonna take off, gang. Good to see you. See you next time. Bye for now.